Now, how would you come up with this if we hadn't just done a radical halogenation? How would you know to come up with this if we hadn't just done a radical halogenation? You see what was added in the, in, in, to the product that's mm -hmm. not in the right. starting material, and then add that. That's right. But wait a second. How do we know that we should use? Uh, so what, what, the correct answer was to do this, right? But how do we know that we shouldn't do, say, this? Because there's no leading group, so the bromine couldn't really. Okay, excellent. Good analysis. This would be good if we wanted to do an SN2 reaction, say, but an SN2 needs a leaving group, and there are no good leaving groups here. Last time I think we were already emphasizing you should always check if there's a good leaving group on the molecule. Um, now, notice, not only does this not have a good leaving group, it doesn't have any functional groups. Not one functional group, right? There are no functional groups here. Well, you guys, that should make this very easy, because you guys have only learned one reaction that works on a molecule with no functional groups. You've only learned one reaction that works on a molecule with no functional groups. What's the reaction that works on a molecule with no functional groups? Bromination. Radical halogenation. Radical halogenation. And usually you want to use bromine because that's the most specific, uh, uh, selective. Okay. So you want to watch out for starting materials that have no functional groups, because then you know what you have to do. You must do a radical halogenation because you haven't learned anything else. In fact, I don't think you, you might not learn anything else that you could do with this in the whole course. So anytime you see something that's got no functional groups, you pretty much have to use a uh, radical halogenation, probably a bromination. So that's an important synthesis uh, idea. Um, so if you take a look at the handout, um, the key part of the handout to look at here is, let's see, well, um, Stereochemistry, a maximum of two stereoisomers, so we went over that here, but notice the synthetic usefulness at the bottom. What is this useful for? Radical halogenation is useful for introducing a functional group into a non-functionalized molecule. Oh, That's so a kind now of a... we can have a new leaving group because it's BR. I'm sorry? Now yeah, so even, uh, now this is BR that we can do other things with. That's right. So um, this is what I would call a non-functionalized molecule. So radical halogenation is useful for what's called functionalization. functionalization. That means putting the first functional group in. So you should watch for instances where there's no functional groups, and then you can use a radical halogenation. In fact, that's just about the only thing that you can do. I can take a look at the handout. And also, they also mention there that usually for synthesis, you can use bromination because it's more selective. So it's more likely to give you only one product, which is what you're looking for. Okay, so those are the key ideas for radical halogenation and when you would come up with it in synthesis. You're pretty sure to have to use this on the exam. When? When the, func when the starting material has no functional groups to start with. Okay, all right. So.